We were asked to construct a, a knowledge asset around um, designing and building um, a very complex plant. Um, it was a, an electronics um, fabrication plant. And when we originally started, um, the client thought that all of the learning would have been about um, the design of the plant, the procurement of the equipment that goes inside it, uh, the commissioning, uh, and, and so on. Now, as it turned out, um, a lot of the learning that people wanted to share with us was actually nothing to do with that. It was about dealing with national governments, dealing with local governments, dealing with trade unions, uh, dealing with utilities, uh, dealing with permits. Um, you know, there's, there's lots of permits now about environmental, water discharge, uh, changing the flow of rivers, etc., etc. And these were the things that people wanted to talk to us about because for them, um, they had assumed that the challenge would be building the plant and as it turned out, the challenge actually was all of the stuff that went before you actually got to the point of pouring concrete. So we created a, a knowledge asset with a, a timeline that showed from business case through to dealing with local go the national governments, local governments and so on. And the client was immensely pleased with it because he didn't understand to begin with or didn't appreciate that a lot of the learning was about this softer things rather than the, the fabrication of the plant itself. And interestingly, they've now gone and used that knowledge asset in three other countries um, to um, build new plants there. So if you're scoping um, a knowledge asset, just be aware that sometimes the learning that will be most valuable isn't um, initially obvious to you. So listen very carefully to what people want to tell you um, during the capture phase um, because that might be where the real value is.